wish me a happy Valentine's Day when you call. That'd be nice. I love eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. I think it was on my second watch that I noticed Clementine is missing a leg here. Third watch that I realized the ending may be suggesting the couple's repeating cycle. And my fourth that I noticed Joel is actually making eye contact with Clementine after stating he's incapable of doing so with a stranger. From the dexterous practical effects, the heart touching music, all the way to its ingenious script by the amazing Charlie Kaufman that makes the word okay. Okay the most moving word of all time, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind never fails to surprise every time you revisit it. And so it's really impossible to pick one best scene as the film transforms and grows with you, making it feel like a completely different film from the last time you've watched it. So although I always say that this is my favorite moment, it really depends. Celebrating Christmas, I rewatched Eternal Sunshine for the ninth time, and this time found one particular line to echo like it has never before. So today I wish to share it with you. Remember me. Try your best. Maybe we can. What makes Eternal Sunshine special is that it presents the idea of love and relationship from a unique perspective. Instead of telling an objective story of two individuals, it invites us to observe only one thing, the private and often biased memories of Joel. The Clementine we see throughout the deletion procedure is a cocktail mixture of the real Clementine, Joel's Clementine as he remembers her, and a reflection of his own inner psyche not the one and only true Clementine that exists outside his head. But this bias isn't harmful, in fact quite the opposite. The one-sided story actually helps us deduce their relationship with more clarity, and their connection ends up resonating with us, because love itself is never just about the person. More often, it's about the remnants of the two that are smudged and embedded into this shared time, place, and memories. Furthermore, the film is less about the relationship itself, but rather about one's internal struggle that occurs as a result of trying to process and deal with the relationship that has passed. So by erasing his memories of Clementine, Joel is in essence erasing a part of himself, like that Huckleberry Hound doll. Oh my One of my favorite things when I was a kid was my Huckleberry Hound doll. And the question of whether it is better to have loved and lost than to have never loved at all becomes a simpler concept when viewed through this film. It's always better to have than to have never. The reality is, of course, more complex and messy. But it isn't to say Joel's memories and experiences are all clean and uncomplicated. His inner turmoils certainly do exist. It's just that the film challenges us to view our memories as something that is capable of filtering and reorganizing if need be. And at the end of the day, it's in part our own efforts that determine where we end up with those experiences. And this is why the film runs backwards, from the last to the first. The line in question comes from a scene that depicts Joel's last remaining memory of Clementine before complete erasure. This is the day we met. Their first encounter at the beach in Montauk. Hi there. Hi. And this reverse chronology goes beyond just creating an illusion of their relationship getting better over time. As Joel recalls their first conversation, he learns that nothing really changes. It's only him and his perception that change over time. It was so intimate, like we were already lovers. It reminds us that a bigger part of loving is in the sadness and pain of separation and loss than in its mysteriously exciting early times. I'm Joel. Hi, Joel. I think your name is magical. By introducing the best memories at the end, the heartache becomes greater with melancholy, but not without the equally growing nostalgia that accompanies the grief with acceptance. Accepting the past and being grateful for having been given the chance. This is it, Joel. Let's 
going to be gone soon. I know. What do we do? Enjoy it. And that's what we all need sometimes, to let go of the things we've lost, time we've wasted, opportunities we've missed, and accept our impermanence. Instead of fighting against the tide of past potentials that could never be, we may need to cherish the moment that may be our last and just enjoy it. She was um, just a girl. Hello everyone, a belated Merry Christmas and Happy 2021. I was originally going to take some break for the holiday season, but Eternal Sunshine forced me to make a quick video. So although it isn't exactly what I normally do, I still hope you had fun with it. I'm still going to be posting my extra contents as usual on my Patreon page, so check that out if you wish to support my work. And if by any chance you haven't watched Eternal Sunshine, please take this video as a chance to give it a watch, or better yet, another watch if you have watched it before. I know things are still looking pretty tough for many, but let's all hope this year turns out to be a brighter one than what 2020 had to offer. So let's try our best to enjoy it. And that's it for me.